Welcome to the Pacific Ocean. This week, we'll be following some of the most impressive mammals on the planet as they navigate this mysterious and expansive ocean. A Catalina whale and her recently born calf. Born a matter of weeks ago in these warm Pacific waters, the calf will stay with its mother and journey back to the cooler waters for feeding. The two are inseparable and will form a strong bond on their epic journey across the world's oceans. Unlike most other whales, the Catalina whale can't submerge beneath the waves as it struggles to hold its breath without panicking. This makes it very easy to spot and its existence an evolutionary mystery. But there's something else in the water today. The whales are oblivious as they're busy practicing their whale song. Unbeknown to the whales, their song attracts predators from miles around, much like a dinner bell. And so the Catalinas stay their course as a dark presence stalks them. A jerry shark, a distant and warmongering cousin of the great white shark. The whales have no idea how much danger they're in. The jerry shark's jaw is laced with 30 millimeter long serrated teeth that will easily defeat the whale's impressively thick blubber. The jerry shark is a ruthlessly efficient killer and attacks with lightning speed. One bite is all it takes. In one fell swoop, the shark disembowels the young calf, spraying its entrails over a wide area. The calf's flippers also took a beating and are drifting close by. The whale is probably dead. The mother must now continue her journey alone, but more bad news strikes. She herself has been wounded in the shark attack and is currently covered in her young calf's entrails. At least, she has comfort in knowing that her situation cannot possibly become worse. Days later, and things are looking down for the mother whale. She's washed up, wounded, on a beach. Unable to move, she doesn't hold high hopes for the future. She cries out as she attempts to wriggle herself into the warm waters. Unfortunately, the loud grunting is attracting unwanted attention from the nearby forest. A mysterious and amusing looking creature creeps closer. A Stuart, a small scavenging mammal, rushes to the scene. First, he wisely chooses to observe the scene and looks left and then right. Once satisfied that there's no predator waiting for him to break cover, he uncontrollably lunges himself at the still alive whale, licking his lips as he goes. He takes a large bite out of the whale's left flipper, practically removing it, and then goes in for the finishing blubber fest. More life from the forest approaches as other scavengers pick up on the stench of the rotting blubber. Though at a glance this might seem like a sad and depressing time for life in War Thunder, one creature's misery and demise is another's pleasure and success. On one side, the poor mother whale has suffered the horrifically messy loss of her calf and has been left to a slow, dehydrated, agonizing death on a dry beach being eaten alive by scavengers and giant maggots. But on the other side of the coin, a singular whale's carcass will support an entire ecosystem for days as dozens of creatures gather for the blubber fest. These scavengers can't believe their luck and make sure to eat their fill before a larger predator arrives to steal the lion's share. For this reason, the scavengers aren't fussy and will eat any part of the whale. Over a period of just one afternoon, the endangered Catalina whale has been stripped to the bone, with little remaining of the once magnificent and endangered beast. Hours have passed and there's signs of activity on the beach. Giant Pacific turtles crawl up from the depths to lay their eggs under the cover of darkness. They drag themselves up one step at a time. It'll take them around four hours to make the 200 meter journey inland. These turtles can weigh upwards of 90 tons, hindering their progress everywhere they go. This weight is due to the absurd and unjustified amount of protection these turtles carry. With no active predators and a shell that's 300 millimeters thick, fate has played a cruel evolutionary trick with these turtles, causing laughable mobility. 
wheezing and huffing with every plod, they're nearly at the laying point. Once the eggs are laid, the turtles must return. The 200 meter journey back is one fraught with danger. It is a treacherous path that many giant turtles have been known to succumb to exhaustion and heat stroke upon. The turtles have laid their eggs. Each turtle will lay anywhere from three to five hundred of these comically shaped eggs and will never see their young hatch or grow to adulthood. The next morning, and all appears quiet. Nothing is out of the ordinary on this quiet beach. Movement over the hill. The eggs have hatched. Dozens of baby turtles flood the beach and race for the open water. Though it's not the most effective method of transport, the baby turtles painfully waddle their way across the baking hot sand. They need to hurry as they're horrifically exposed. Due to the short six hours they spend confined to an egg, the baby turtles hatch with very little development. As a result, they have no protection to the sunlight. If they spend more than a couple of hours baking in the sun, they'll be cooked through and ready for consumption. The beach is also a perfect killing ground for predators to take advantage of. All of these things combine to make a turtle's life short and often violently unpleasant. Gigantic Russian spider crabs. Like their Japanese spider crab cousins, they're monsters akin to a nightmare. These powerful beasts live in oceanside rocks and feast on the soft, warm bodies of baby turtles. They cunningly wait for the turtles to expend their energy in an early sprint and then strike. Baby turtles don't have developed eyesight and use guesswork to determine the direction of water. This sadly means they are often oblivious to their impending doom. The gigantic Russian spider crabs easily pick up and scuttle away with the turtles. Weighing ten times as much, this takes little effort. The turtles spread out, which makes them even easier targets. Only the very fastest handful of baby turtles will make it to the open water. Once caught, there's no getting away. The crabs will often take their prey back to their lairs and consume them there, alive. A single crab can consume its own body weight in turtle meat. To manage such an unbelievable diet, a crab will take a turtle one at a time for storage within its lair. What happens next is truly unpleasant for the turtles, as they're consumed alive by giant flesh-eating mollusks. The crabs may store upwards of 10 turtles in their lair, in a trophy mountain configuration. The crabs will then climb this mountain of flesh and consume the entire living hill in a single sitting. The crabs then scatter and fight to death for the remaining turtles, as a few may have slipped past. This turtle was knocked upside down in the confusion and cooked to death. Two of the turtles have made it within a stone's throw distance of the shore by outrunning their unfortunate siblings. They race down the hillside on the final stretch and escape the grasps of the crabs. Luckily, the crabs have already consumed tons worth of turtle flesh and struggle to keep pace with the added weight. In the end, three of the estimated 50 turtles made it to water, where a further two were washed back ashore and eaten by the crabs. This concludes our sea life tour of the Pacific. If you enjoyed this documentary, dispatch a like via Sea Turtle and I'll see you next time. Cheerio! Up, they go down, yum, yum.